Hello, so we continue from where we left off last time. Recall that last time we introduced the Bessel's functions of the first kind, J, P, Z. P was real, P was non-negative. Now we are going to take P to be a positive, sorry. Now we are going to take P to be a non-negative integer. So we should use the symbol K. So J, K, Z we define for non-negative integers. Now. For convenience, when k is negative, we define j k z to be minus 1 to the power k times j minus k. That is 1.50 in the display, right? So this is a matter of convenience. When k is not an integer, 1.50 is not the definition. And then when we are given any sequence, we encode the sequence into a generating function. So you take a sequence a0, a1, a2, a3, we construct the power series a0 plus a1t plus a2t square etc. And this is called the generating function for the sequence. You may have heard about the z transform for instance. This power series may converge or it may not converge. If it doesn't converge, you work with formal power series. Here we don't have a sequence, we have a two-sided sequence, we have a bilateral sequence j0, j1, j2, j3, etc. and j minus 1, j minus 2, j minus 3. So the generating function will also be a bilateral series 1.51. You see 1.51 is a bilateral series g, z, t. This summation k from minus infinity to infinity t to the power k, j, k, z. This g, z, t is called the generating function for the sequence of Bessel's functions jk. We are trying to obtain a closed form expression for gk. So let us try that. Somehow we are trying to sum the series that you see 1.51. Before you sum this series, we must understand the convergence of 1.51. Does it converge uniformly on compact subsets? So first of all, t equal to 0 is out. So t is in the punctured plane. t is a complex number and t is not equal to 0. And j, k, z, the j, k is our entire functions. So z varies over all the complex numbers. So let us first try to obtain an elementary estimate on the j, k's. So that's the next job. We are going to get an elementary estimate on jk's. So jkz recall is summation n from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n n factorial n plus k factorial z by 2 to the power k plus 2 n. So now we want to take the absolute value. So take the absolute value and apply the triangle inequality. The Simply the absolute value goes inside the summation. The minus 1 to the power n goes away. You get mod z by 2 to the power k plus 2 n. Now what we do is that we do a small thing, we multiply and divide by 2n plus k factorial. So this 2n plus k factorial upon n factorial into n plus k factorial, what is that? That is nothing but the binomial coefficient 2n plus k choose n. So now we know that m choose r the binomial coefficient m choose r is less than or equal to 2 to the power m. So 2n plus k choose n. That binomial coefficient will be less than or equal to 2 to the power k plus n. So this 2 to the power k plus n here in the denominator and 2n plus k choose n. This will cancel out and we will get yeah, that's exactly what I written. 2n plus k choose n less than or equal to 2 to the power 2n plus k. So using this, we get mod jkz less than or equal to summation n from 0 to infinity mod z to the power k plus 2n divided by 2n plus k factorial. 
So now let us multiply and divide by k factorial and then let us pull out the z to the power k outside the summation z to the power k upon k factorial into summation n from 0 to infinity k factorial upon 2n plus k factorial. What is k factorial 1 into 2 into 3 into up to k? What is 2n plus k factorial? 2n plus k factorial is 2n factorial after that 2n plus 1, 2n plus 2, da, 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 2n plus k. 1 into 2 into 3 up to k that product the k factorial is going to be less than or equal to 2n plus 1, 2n plus 2, da, 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 2n plus k. So that is what we are left with is mod z to the power k upon k factorial summation n from 0 to infinity mod z to the power 2n upon 2n factorial and that is nothing but cosh mod z hyperbolic cosine. The hyper, uh, hyperbolic cosine is cosh mod z. So we get the elementary estimate mod jkz less than or equal to mod z to the power k upon k factorial cosh mod z. This is a very coarse estimate but never mind this coarse estimate is enough for the purpose at hand. We can use this coarse estimate to show that the series g zk converges for all zt in c cross c minus 0. What is that series again? That series is nothing but the series g z t equal to summation k from minus infinity to infinity t to the power k j k z. The series converges uniformly on compact subsets of when uh, c cross c minus 0. z varies over c t varies over c minus 0. So in this product domain the series converges uniformly on compact sets. That is a very easy thing to do now that we got this estimate. Now that we got this estimate which is highlighted in purple use this estimate to show that the series converges uniformly on compact subsets. That is left as an exercise for you. Now we come to theorem 14. Theorem 14 says summation t to the power k j k z k from minus infinity to infinity has a closed expression namely x of z t by 2 minus z upon 2 t that is display 1.52 on the slide. Denoting the sum on the left hand side by g z t as always we can differentiate term by term. Why can you differentiate term by term? The coarse estimate tells us that the differentiation is a valid operation. Term by term differentiation is going to be valid. Recall from basic analysis, when can you differentiate an infinite series term by term? When the series of derivatives converges uniformly. Remember, the series of derivatives must converge uniformly. Here, we we demand that the convergence is uniform on compact subsets. But you are differentiating with respect to z. So the series of derivatives is summation k from minus infinity to infinity t to the power k j k prime z. Well, you may argue that we have an estimate for j k z. We do not have an estimate for j k prime z. We do in fact have the expression for j k prime. Where is that expression? Remember the exercise that I left last time? The exercise that we did last time? Here on the slide. We see that there is a formula for jk and jk prime. jk prime is one half of jk minus 1 minus jk plus 1. Look at the third exercise here. We can use this third exercise and write jk prime in terms of jk minus 1 and jk plus 1 and we use the estimate that we have obtained for these jk's, the cosh estimate that we got and we will prove that the series of derivatives converges uniformly on compact sets. So term by term differentiation is valid. So perform the term by term differentiation and replace jk prime by one half of jk minus 1 minus jk plus 1 and split this summation into two summations. Split the summation into two summations namely in one of them pull the t out in the other one introduce an extra t divided by 1 upon t. 
but this again this summation is again g and this summation is again g so we get del g by del z is t by 2 minus 1 upon 2 t g z t that is a first order linear ODE and we know how to solve a first order linear ODE right. What is the solution? G Z T equal to G 0 T into X of T Z by 2 minus Z upon 2 T. Now we need to calculate G 0 T. How do you calculate G 0 T? In the expression for G Z T put Z equal to 0. When you put z equal to 0, we must understand what is jk0. Look at the definition of jk. jk has a factor z to the power k times a power series. So when k is 1, 2, 3, etc., it is 0. So jk0 equal to 0 for k greater than or equal to 1 and j0 of 0. Look at the definition of J0 of 0, J0 of 0 is 1 and from that you will immediately conclude that G of 0 T equal to 1 for T not equal to 0. So immediately you put it in this formula, we get that G Z T equal to X of T Z by 2 minus Z upon 2 T. So the expression for the generating function has been obtained in closed form. So we obtained the generating function for the Bessel's function. What is gzt again? Summation k from minus infinity to infinity t to the power k jkz. That is expression that generating function has been summed in closed form. This formula is called Schleiermilch's formula, Oscar Schleiermilch. So now we shall use this formula for Schleiermilch to obtain an integral representation for jk. Now so far you will ask me where have we used ideas of Fourier series? This is all power series manipulation. Yes, you are right. So far we have not used Fourier series. Now we will bring in the Fourier series. So now in the expression for Schleiermilch's formula, in the expression for Schleiermilch's formula, we will put t equal to e to the power i theta. We will put t equal to e to the power i theta. z by 2 comes out as a common factor e to the power i theta minus e to the power minus i theta. That is 2i sin theta and the 2 cancels out and we get when I put t equal to e to the power i theta in Schleiermilch's formula 1.52, we simply get x of i z sin theta. And what is what is a g? What is the formula for g? Summation k from minus infinity to infinity j k z e to the power i k theta. So 1.54. Look at 1.54. This is exactly a Fourier series. 1.54 is precisely a Fourier series written in complex notation. We are used to writing Fourier series as a naught plus summation n from 1 to infinity a n cos n theta plus b n sin n theta. But write the cosines and sines in exponential form and you will get the complex form of Fourier series. So 1.54 is basically a Fourier expansion. Only thing is that it is written in complex form. So the, so the generating function has been obtained explicitly as x of i z sin theta when t is e to the power i theta. So now exactly as we did in the earlier case, we multiply by e to the power minus i k theta, integrate term by term and get j k z. So j k z will be what? You have to multiply the whole thing by e to the power minus i k theta. You will get 1 upon 2 i integral minus pi to pi x of i z sin theta minus i k theta d theta. So we have obtained an integral representation for j k z. Of course, we can do some simplification. x of i z sin theta minus i k theta is cosine z sin theta minus k theta 
प्लस आई साइन जेड साइन थीटा माइनस के थीटा साइन ऑफ जेड साइन थीटा माइनस के थीटा इज एन ऑड फंक्शन एंड सो मैन इंटीग्रेट फ्रॉम माइनस पाई टू पाई दैट विल बी जीरो सो ओनली द कोसाइन टर्म विल सर्वाइव एंड यू गेट द रिजल्ट एज एडवर्टाइज इन थियरम फिफ्टीन only the cosine term will survive the sine term will not be there and this is a cosine is an even function the integral from minus pi to pi is twice the integral from 0 to pi the two factor cancels out so that completes the proof of schlumilch's formula we shall later use this formula of schlumilch and the integral representation that we have obtained in connection with an interesting problem in celestial mechanics namely inversion of the kepler equation we shall see how to invert the kepler equation using these ideas okay that will come in a later chapter as an application the fourier series again will play a role here are some exercises the bessel's function is written down z squared y double prime plus z y prime plus z squared minus k squared y equal to 0 show that x j 0 x is the solution of y double prime plus y equal to minus j 1 x show that j n of x plus y is summation k from minus infinity to infinity j k x j n minus k y this is called the addition formula for bessel's functions just as you got the addition formula for trigonometric function cos of a plus b is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b sin of a plus b is sin a cos b plus cos a sin b these are addition formula for the trigonometric functions how does the addition formula for bessel's functions look like it looks like this the last displayed thing in the slide those are some exercises i'm leaving it for you so what is the use of integral representations i would like to emphasize that this integral representation for bessel's function that we obtained is not just a lemma for solving a problem in celestial mechanics later in the course this integral representation has many other uses For example we had an expression for jk as a power series you will argue that power series are perfectly nice objects why not just work with power series well there is a trade off power series are amenable to algebraic operations i can add power series i can multiply two power series the cauchy product of two power series will converge absolutely within the disk of convergence but power series are amenable to algebraic operations but on the other hand they are not very convenient in understanding the growth or the decay properties of the sum function whereas the integral representations are better suited for getting estimates for example using this integral representation one can show that the bessel's function jkz has infinitely many zeros you can understand decay properties of the bessel's function as x goes to infinity you can get asymptotic expansions for the bessel's functions for large x these are extremely important in a variety of different problems including problems in wave phenomenon so the integral representations have a variety of uses besides the problem in celestial mechanics that we are going to study later Here are some exercises from the book of Kerner exercises for Fourier analysis Cambridge University Press 1993 CUP I abbreviated Cambridge University Press because I don't have space so it's a very good book it contains lots of exercises and they are non trivial exercises he has a book on Fourier series and there's a companion volume to it consider the function f from minus pi to pi to r given by f of x equal to 1/12 3x squared minus pi squared on minus pi to pi 
this is the way the function is defined. Clearly, this is an even function. And so I can take its 2 pi periodic extension and the 2 pi periodic extension will be obviously Lipschitz. The theorems that we have proved will be valid such as the pointwise convergence theorem. The first problem asks you to show that f of x equals summation n from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n upon n squared cosine nx straight off. You just compute the Fourier coefficients and you appeal to the pointwise convergence theorem. Next problem, find the sum of the series n from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n upon n cube sine nx. No prizes for guessing. You have to integrate term by term the previous one. Term by term integration will be valid because the series converges uniformly. So, you get the second one. Third problem. Consider the sum of the series n from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n upon n cube sin nx sin ny. The sum function is going to be a continuous function on R2. I am asking you to find the sum function f of xy and asking you to find the places where f of xy vanishes. Very easy, you introduce a factor of half and you introduce a factor of 2. 2 sin a sin b is cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b. This is defactorization and then you use the previous one. Now we must close this chapter here. So the proof of Dirichlet's theorem concerning piecewise monotone functions we shall prove later. Existence of a continuous function whose Fourier series diverges at specified points. We will discuss later. We will obtain it as a consequence of the Bayer category theorem or the Banach Steinhaus's theorem. The starred items will be taken up if time permits. Hardy's proof of the functional equation for the Riemann zeta function and Fourier expansions for Bessel's function. I think with this, I'd like to close this chapter here. Thank you very much.